Gobstep and welcome to number three or episode three of Travelling with Gobster. Right then, so at the end of the last video, or during the last video, I mentioned that I've got to go to the tip. I'm on the way to the tip right now. That's you've got to get the rubbish out of the way. Traffic is still it's the same day, but obviously I've broke it up into another video. This is the 22nd of December still. And the traffic is still horrendous because everybody's rushing around because it's Christmas. Um, and we're on our way to the local tip, Bicken Hill, which will actually take us um, around the back end of the runway and that uh, at Birmingham International Airport. Uh, as you can see, traffic's still bad. Uh, being the Friday before Christmas, it's hardly surprising it's busy. Uh, and I've got 10 minutes. Well, actually, I've got. Um, I've got 30 minutes, uh, yeah, no, 10, 20 minutes to get there. That's of course if we ever go at the end of this bloody road. We've got people not making any decisions. Let's just go. Still chaos down there, but we should be alright going this way because um, there's no shops this way. <laughs> so by rights, we should be fine. So, oh, yeah, I can smell the diesel out of that bloody car in front. Oh dear, he's one of these, I'm going to crawl across the speed bump kind of dudes. It is what it is. So I said there's, uh, we've mentioned this before, there's a bit of Elmden Park there. And we'll head up towards Bicken Hill Tip. Uh, one of the lasting decent things, probably the only thing I would say that, I would say that was the good thing from Covid, um, was the booking at the tip. Now I know it sounds silly, but before, and I'll mention it, I'll give you a demonstration when we get closer to where we're going. Um, before, you could just go to the tip whenever. But the problem is with that is, so could everybody else. And when we get closer, I'll show you sometimes where the queues would be. I mean, you could spend a good two hours trying to go to the tip. So during COVID, obviously, you know, with all that madness and craziness and stupidity, um, the tip was closed. And then it reopened with limited bays. But the one thing you had to do was you had to book. You had to say, oh, you know, book at a time when you were coming to the tip. Now they've kept this in place, you know, after COVID. And I think it's brilliant. In fact, pretty much everyone I've met has thought it's brilliant. And the reason brilliance is because instead of queuing like you used to you can go I mean you'll see I mean I won't be there that long because whereas before you sat queuing and waiting to get in and then you were lucky if you could get in near the thing you know the bins you needed to or anywhere my usual one was when I turned up I'd end up like I'd have like I don't know cardboard and, and I'd end up as always the the, 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 the parking bay the furthest from so or the worst one was when you were carrying wood big sheets of wood you had to get rid of. Oh, by the way, to your left now, you'll see Birmingham International Airport as we pass through. Um, this is the cargo terminal on the tower, the old control tower. Somebody's in a definite rush to go nowhere. Formula One driver, buddy. Um, so yeah, so you know, wood, you'd end up nowhere near the wood skip and have to break your back to carry it all the way there. But obviously nowadays, not so much. And you know, it's just so. I mean, my, my slot's booked at half past 11. Uh, I'm, I'm currently while well recording this video, it's 11.23. Speedy guy didn't get very far, you never do usually. Um, so and I know I get there, I get 10 minutes before, 10 minutes after, after 10 minutes after I'm too late and I have to rebook, which won't be a problem once we get down here. So, yeah, so right in front of you is the Holly Holly Day Inn, and that used to be the old control tower terminal building and the beacon that you may see on top which you will when we get a bit further over the top you'll see a glass thing and that used to be Elmden Aerodrome's uh, beacon that would be lit up so you could find the airfield and that used to be the old building it's now a hotel so a bit of history for you then so right we're on the A45 heading towards Coventry uh, and we're actually now going to be passing or coming alongside the airport now the road where you are now the a45 used to go dead straight 
from here. But uh, when they extended the runway a fair few years ago, data will be up on there, they needed to make the runway longer. So we now go around this bend and the embankment is where the airfield is. Ta da It's simple, isn't it, really? So there we go. That little red white thing's new. I haven't noticed that before, or maybe I've just not noticed it. That would be something to do with the instrument landing system, no doubt. So this is new Coventry Road, the new bit that goes round the runway, round the airfield. Yeah, so as we come round the corner, you'll see the row of yellow lights, light poles, and they're the approach lights, and you can see the end of the runway there, with the red lights and the orange stuff. And we go sort of low below the runway, and up there on the embankment is a good place to film, which hopefully the summer this year, I'm sorry, next year, I'll be up there filming. You've got the, some of the towers, you've got the radar, approach radar, now on your uh, left-hand side, spinning away as it does, with a very interestingly designed tower. It's got curbs on it for the wind. So that's Birmingham Airport. We'll get a better view on the way back. The chaos around on the roads is because of um, they're doing an M42 junction improvement. It probably won't improve it much, but there if you go. And um, obviously, when we go a bit further up, it'll be HS2. Camera there doesn't work, so no worries there. So this screen bridge is a new footbridge that's been in uh, put in place for HS2 and takes you over to nowhere <laughs> at the moment. Apparently it's going to be a like little park over there, I don't know. So we're now approaching the M42 junction, um, 4A, the one where there's always traffic problems, all the time. And the NEC and Resorts World, which will probably you might pick up on the other way back. Not far now from um, the, the tip, Bickham Hill tip, which will appear on your right hand side. The two triangular buildings on the right, which you may have just clipped through the trees, that's the uh, National Motorcycle Museum, which you'll probably get a better view on the way back when we come down the other way, when we go back the other way. Haulage Yard to your left, and then you can see the big two towers there in. This is um, the HS2. And over on your right now, you'll see another con uh, little brick tower, uh, and that's the old incinerator, and that's where the tip is. You may have picked a bit of it up on the right. So, yeah, so you'll now notice on your left a load of um, dirt and stuff. That's HS2. It's also on the right hand side of the road, which you'll pick up as we come along. But this is all to do with the uh, HS2, the bit that's actually still going to be finished. So a lot of um, messing around and dirt and that. So, we're now heading towards where the tip is. We have to turn right to this, go all the way around, back on ourselves. And what we got there is, you've got the Stonebridge Toby Carvery. Uh, that's, I think there's a nice carvery there. It's all right, it's, that's, that pub's been there for a long time. Let me cheer you. So yeah, so as you were coming down here, this would be, this, this is the way to Bickerdale Tip from where I live. Now, as I said before, the wonderful booking system was instigated. Um, please don't ever get rid of it because it's brilliant and awesome. And while you're breaking, the lights are green. The lights are green. You are a knob. I'm going over. That's thanks to that taxi. Um, before that, you would just turn up to get rid of your rubbish. Now, you never knew who was going to be here, how many people were going to be here, whatever. And there has been many a time, as I come around this bend, as we're clearly surrounded by people who just do not know where they're going, you can go around here, you could turn up here, and this would be, believe it or not, the back end of the queue. You could actually end up sat here, yeah, to go to the tip. And you'll see there is Bickenhill Household Waste Recycling Centre. Uh, so you'll now get an idea of how far you'd have to sit and wait to get there. They used to put signs up telling you how long the wait would be. Uh, back there, you could have a three hour wait. Oh my fucking God. Unless you're going to the... Um, dog place, no. So yes, yeah, so you're all the way down here, all the way down here, all the way down here. And <clears throat> so you get here and then you'd still be queuing. You'd have to queue all the way around here. 
That's traffic. Where, that's where all the uh, you know those inconvenient traffic lights that appear block the road. <laughs> that's where they come from. So we're now entering the tip. That used to be an old incinerator, <clears throat> no longer used. And uh, here we go. Oh, the top barriers. So we've had a big truck in, and then uh, we'll do what we've got to do. It's my friend, so we'll just book in. How you doing, bud? You alright, mate? Yeah, it is, mate. Awesome. Well, if I don't see you, mate, have a nice Christmas. How long are you shut for? Two days. Just two days. Crap in it, really. I'm back on the Alright, so, hey, not too bad. At least a little bit of a break. We should have, but it is, it is what it is. <laughs> Yeah, it's mad that, isn't it? Oh, well, shh. <laughs> the privileges of rank. <laughs> nice one. Have a nice Christmas anyway. See you soon. Now I've got to see if I can park anyway. Uh, there is a, there's a slot here. We can get in. Um, we'll get in here. Because we can. I think. We should be. Yeah, there's plenty of room. We've got a mark by. We'll get in the mark by. There we go. No problem. Here we go. <sighs> Go out a bit because these bays are at a funny angle. There we go. There we go. Nicely in. Try not to run anyone over. Just nudge it slightly up. That'll do. We're in place. There you go. All done. Took me two and a half minutes. <laughs> quite busy. To be fair, there's quite a lot of vehicles here today. It is what it is. Bit of a tight turn around here. You can get around, no problem at all. And away we go. And that's the tip done. And might be, I'm not sure. Should be the last one of the year. Strange having to say things like that. Well, we say it every year, don't we? When we go around at this time of the year, we do. So, although technically when you're watching this, this is the new year, and therefore it won't be the last, probably the. Yeah, you know what I mean. In any case, so we're on our way back. This one used to have trees down, by the way. They chopped them all down for uh, HS2 or whatever. I don't know. They were going to move it because of HS2, because it, apparently it was too close, but. Oh, oh, ah, oh. This road's always rough. So yeah, so there's the tip, and we're done. We're now heading back home. We've got some letters to post at the nearest convenient post box. Uh, go past the loan field. Now, it used to say, as you say, you used to say National Exhibition Centre. You can't get to it down there. That road's closed now, um, so you can't go that way. So as we come down now, we're coming back to. As you can see, all on the signs. Any case, we're coming back to the M42. Triangle roofs you can still see poking through there the uh, National Motorcycle Museum which you'll see advertised when we get there. There you go, so on the sign. Slow down and stop at the lights. And there we go. So you can just see it now just around the corner where it says sign National Motorcycle Museum, which is also a conference centre. Um, one day we'll actually go around there with the GoPro. And um, we'll uh, we'll do a we'll pay a visit to the motorcycle museum and uh, we can film there uh, when I get my extra batteries because uh, it uses a lot of batteries as the old GoPro only because I'm uh, filming in super high quality which is important yeah because I want to get as much good quality footage as I can uh, but in the new year I'm buying um, a charger a desktop charger with some extra batteries so that will help and I'll be able to do things go around and film plenty of room on the memory card and everybody's racing. I don't know why, I don't know what the rush is for, but we're rushing. So there you go, so there's the entrance to the National Motorcycle Museum. Um, I'm not a huge, like, like, over the top with motorcycles myself, but I think it's something that'll be useful for the channel. It'll be nice if we put that in. And hopefully we'll be able to uh, do some more of these. Now, in the distance you may see the uh, white things sticking up, look like um, triangles. That's the roof to the arena, NEC Arena, and whatever name it's called currently. I mean, it's with the, it used to be the NEC Arena. I think it's the Utility Arena, the Genting Arena. They just keep changing the name. I think it might still be the Genting Arena. I don't know. In any case, it's it's the NEC thing where we go to concerts, when we go to concerts. Um, so there you go. And you can also see now as you come around, car park for the NEC and Resorts World, which is popping up there. 
which has got a casino and gaming thing in and it's also got a lot of shops we need to accelerate a bit because we need to go cross out into the road which is fine and we're, we're done we're in we're out we're okay everything's good yeah, i don't know what he's doing always careful at this junction because people can do stupid things muddy screen now from that van so now we're going back the way we came obviously because it would be stupid to do anything different <laughs> but you'll get a different view of the airfield from here uh, sadly there's no aircraft seem to be queuing up but there's uh, normally as you pop up over this hill um, there's the turning point at the end of the runway just here sometimes you can see the tails of planes uh, there's nothing today so sadly can't give you anything there as you can see, you know, a little bit of different view as the rain comes down again at the uh, uh, ILS and the approach systems. Some of the lights. But the runway is just just on the end there. You can't really see it from here. Uh, as I say, one of these days, I'll try and get up on the uh, up on the berm, which is this end of the runway. The other end of the runway is it flies over Shelton. Heath Country Park, remember I mentioned that in the last two videos, so that's where it will be and then as you can see, just coming into view now, that's the new control tower there's a little gap there in the thing, but you can't, you can't see anything from this end but there is a little gap in the uh, sound barrier somebody else in a rush so that's the brand new control tower which has currently got an Emirates on got another ground control radar spinning and loads of communication towers it's got Emirates on it at the moment. Uh, obviously, when we hosted Britain hosted the Olympics, they used to have the Olympic rings on. See, they go. But it's uh, currently, I suppose, the tower's sponsored by Emirates. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Another speed camera that currently isn't working. So we go past there. An old farm buildings here. We've been there for God for a long time. And then we're back at the lights as you can see there's the holiday inn and as i said that light used to be how you used to find the airfield back in the days of the, the burgeoning days of flight and then you may just see some buildings down there that's the uh, free port there's a cargo port there uh, where planes can land and take their stuff straight into those buildings the bonded warehouses and such things are there uh, on the right now as you can see, if you turn left, it'll take you around the back way to um, what would be called Damson Lane Gate, or when I used to work. So I used to work at the Rover, it would we used to be called the East Gate. So that's the back way. And then if you've been watching Walking with Gobster, this is the park area. When I walk around the big walk round, it's this is the, the park on the left. So that's where I was walking. So it all, everything ties together. You'll get used to the places where I've been and where I'm going. But yeah, so we'll, we'll definitely have to organise going around the uh, National Motorcycle Museum. Plane's just taking off. Whether we'll catch it on the camera, I don't know. But it's just took off. It's Ryanair. It's just took off. So, um, be interested to see whether they actually managed to get them to their destination or not. But uh, another camera doesn't work <laughs> at the moment. But yeah, there's the Ryanair flight. You might just catch it on the edge of the camera. As you go around Eagle Court. It's a high court junction in force for speed, cru speed cruising here and they oh it's coming here on a Saturday Saturday Friday tonight well, on the Friday it's Friday Saturday nights uh, you get idiots absolutely tanking it down here it's just ridiculous uh, red light camera that does work so don't drop the red lights if you come here and then you got all the signs for the botanical gardens and all that sort of stuff that's in, that's in town Birmingham City Centre traffic is getting really bad it's backing all the way up to here and that's at 11 45 so we'll flip around now go find the post box which used to be everywhere now you now you struggle you have to you have to know where they are now because if you don't you, you did they used to be everywhere that's a that vehicle tried to uh, beat me by cutting up the road uh, it lost ah. um so what well, we're on the way down here I know there's a post box on the way. It's one that one with the Christmas stuff on, which we could go and have a look at, I suppose, while we're posting the letter. That's if we ever get down the road. And it's just, I'm, 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 I am and I'm not surprised how busy it is, considering it's uh, quite intense. Back 
past Streamside Way up at the uh, Elmden Park, which we will have new videos on the GoPro soon uh, in the new year. Well, which is now when you're watching this. It's very confusing trying to remember that I'm recording these things for for next year. But it's a great. Oh, it's very nice. He flashed us through. Even though, oh no, I think he was letting the person. You go. Know, you have to be careful when you do that. You see, because you can confuse people. So it's still absolute chaos trying to turn down Wells Road. It's all the way it's backed up. Everywhere's chaotic still. But we don't care because we're not going that way, fortunately. We're going this way. As I said, there is a post box up here, which we will um, be stopping at. If I can. Yeah, we can. We'll see the post box putting up you know, lovely Christmas stuff on. And we're just going to tuck in here for a few seconds. We're going to leave the engine running. We're going to put the old uh, hazardy hazardy is on. And I'm actually going to leave you now. So I just go out of the car. You'll see me go and you'll see me come back as you can see quite clearly. Right, uh, auto stop off so the engine won't stop. Won't take long. There we go, that didn't take long, did it? <laughs> they're not mine, they're for my neighbour over the road, uh, Maureen. Lovely old lady. I'll tell Brad as much as possible because that's what good people do. Yeah, sometimes, you know, people call me this, that, and the other, and they call me horrible names, bigot, this, that, and the other, but they have no idea. You know, I make sure around here that all, you know, the road that I live on, all the old people are looked after. Uh, Maureen like, recently lost her husband. I've been helping her ever since. Whenever she needs me, she can phone me and I'll go over there and give her a hand because that's what good people do. So when you're calling me a racist and a hateful person and a bigot and God knows what else, you have no idea. Which is what I love because people make these decisions and have no ideas. As just for a change, I back onto my drive. <laughs> we'll bring this one to a close. I hope you enjoyed this video. I mean, I, mean, I know these are something new, experimental. I won't know until they're uploaded whether they're going to do any good. But I just thought, you know, it's just, why not? Then you get to see me when you get to hear things and how I do stuff and you get to know the local area and anywhere else that I go, which is the whole idea of Travel with Gobster. We're just me travelling around and we looking at stuff and sometimes finding stuff out. So, with that, I'm going to bring you to a close. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please feel free to like because that really does help with the algorithm. And the more you like it and the more you comment, because there's a comment section down below, the more that YouTube see that people like it and then they push the video and that's how the algorithm works. So, especially to those of you who like putting really nice hateful messages and want me to die and call me bigot and go knows what else, that's interaction and that helps the video. So, in reality, you may hate on me and hate the video that you probably haven't actually watched because a lot of people don't actually watch the videos when they hate them, they just put comments. Um, that actually helps me. So, feel free to carry on. They're only helping me, not hindering me in any way, shape, or form. But there you go. So whenever you catch this video up on YouTube, I hope you have a wonderful morning, afternoon or evening. And with that, and as always, and until the next one, ladies and gentlemen, I am going to love you and leave you.